Oh, I can't tell why I fixed stuff. Today we've got this Martian uh, KE calculator. Um, well, particularly the common one. Um, I believe the KA, KB, KC, and KE um, were the hand cranked ones before the Model H, which moved the crank down here to the side. Um, and I also believe these were released before the EA, which was the first um, electric Martian. Well, the first electric Martian of this style. Um, supposedly they had made a, another electric one um, before, but I've never actually seen any real evidence that they were mass produced. But anyway, this is from probably around 1922, 23 somewhere in there. Um, see it's a uh, nine column input, nine column counter, and 18 column accumulator. Uh, of course it's locked up, probably the um, same swollen drum issue that we had in the Martian XL. Um, before we get into this, something I wanted to mention, I'm going to um, try, instead of making, you know, one long video once a week, I'm going to make, you know, maybe a couple, like every couple days release like a shorter video um, and just kind of spread out a little bit and just see if people like that or not. i um, just kind of curious whether that's going to be better or worse than the one long video once a week thing. But so we're going to try that with this, maybe, you know, do like a little check out here and then the next video actually get into doing some work on it. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, I was going to put a poll on my channel to see what people thought, but apparently you have to have a thousand subscribers in order to do polls. So um, just try it and see how it goes. Um, anyway, so you can see it's missing um, one of these red keys here, and it's missing the clear key here. Um, I do have a parts machine in Monroe that has some of these red keys, so I'll probably just put one here and then just put another red key here for the clear. Even though it's supposed to say clear on it, we'll just do that. I think it'll look okay. Um, so not worried about that. Usually I hate missing keys, but I think I have a solution for this one, so I'm okay with it. Um, you can see it did get a little bit of damage in shipping. This handle is messed up. So I'll just see if we can hammer that back in and peen it back over. It's just a rod that goes through this knob and then it's peened over. So let's see if we can fix that. Um, this looks a little bit bent. We'll have to see if we have to bend that back out or not. Um, I did already start driving the table pin out just because I hate table pins so much and this one actually is moving so uh, that should be fine. So um, I guess what we can do is just have a little look around on this. Um, so here's your uh, crank for the clearing, uh, counter clearing, crank for the accumulator clearing, clearing. Here's your shift left and right. Of course it's not going to do anything because the machine's locked up. Your main drive handle. Over here on the side there's a button for carriage release. You can just push this and then use this knob to drag it wherever you want. We've got um, plus minus key, times divide key. These should be for repeat and non-repeat. Uh, so like if you're just adding you push this down then it'll clear the keyboard every time. If you're multiplying and dividing you push this down and it won't clear the keyboard every time. Uh, same as the XL we have our, our shift lever for counter direction. So in this position it counts additions. And here it counts subtractions. I'm saying it counts up for subtractions in that position. Uh, there's supposed to be a little window here over the uh, keyboard entry display. That's, it's not, I don't think someone took it out. It looks like it's just disintegrated. You can see there's like some black or brown crumbs there. It's like the, the window somehow turned into that material. That's kind of interesting. So basically, what they did to make this machine was they took the XL. So this back piece here is like pretty much the same as the XL. And then instead of having the lever setting here in between each digit, they moved the lever off of the, um, the setting rotating piece down around to the back somewhere. Um, you'll see when I open this up. And then they attached a lever to that and then ran the lever under the keyboard. So when you push a key down, it pushes on the lever, which rotates and pulls down or up or something that I don't remember it's been a while since I worked on one of these keyboard machines but basically the idea is when you push a key down it pushes on that lever which rocks and then moves the rotating piece around the drum here in place of the um, the lever for lever setting like the XL has but other than that 
and basically it just is an XL in the back with a keyboard stuck on the front. And I just extended the, you can even see that. I just extended the um, rod that goes from the shifter piece under the carriage, just extend it out to the front and then put the same lever on it. So pretty similar to an XL, just with the keyboard on the front. Um, you can see it has the same type feet. And actually on this one, you can see the feet are not in bad shape on the front at least. This one's got a little bit of a chunk missing out of it, but other than that, it, it's pretty good. So what I think I'm gonna do is try and take a mold of this front one that looks pretty decent and see if I can make some out of like silicone or something that will be somewhat soft but strong enough to hold the machine um, because I have a couple other machines that need feet and the back ones aren't quite as in good shape. You see there's more chunks missing out of those so I might replace those too. Um, so that's something we can do. Uh, we can take a little look on the side here. So you can see it has a nice uh, plate with the logo on it. Um, so there's that button I was talking about for the carriage release. Here's the latch for the um, crank handle. So this pulls in and out and then in the home position it latches in there. Um, that was later removed on the later XLs and the model H's. Um, they didn't have this latch. Take a look at the back. The back's going to be basically the same as an XL. Got the little um, patent information down there, which is pretty sad on this one. You can't hardly read anything. And then on the other side, those are the same thing, just the logo there and the crank for community crank. So, that's basically, you know, pretty basic machine um, and then when they did the electric series they basically took this machine and then added a motor on the back and added a plus minus and then the multiplier keyboard here. Um, when we take this apart we can get into more of the details about what exactly they changed to do that. Um, but yeah, kind of interesting actually. I didn't really plan it this way but um, in the past few months on my channel I've kind of gone in somewhat in order of the complexity of these Marchant machines. Um, I think a couple months ago I did a Marchant XLA, which is you know one of the most basic machines to use the uh, modified pinwheel mechanism. And then a couple of like this last month I did the Marchant XL, which is basically the back piece of this, so that's somewhat more advanced. And then now we're doing the KE, which is the XL with the keyboard, so it's kind of like going up in an um, complexity, which is kind of interesting, but anyway, so I think we will leave this video as like the little intro and kind of overview of this machine, and then in the next video we'll actually get into uh, pulling this apart, confirming what the problem is, and going about how we're going to fix that. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, look for the next one, maybe in like one or two days, and thank you for watching.